All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan, again. Ugh. Now I'm actually irritated because I just found out. Ah, uh, my God. I don't even know what I'm gonna say because I'm just annoyed because it turns out the audio wasn't plugged in because the because I because I had to shift the thing around so it wasn't plugged in. And of course, for some reason, I didn't look at my OBS. I just assumed that, oh, the light's on. Okay, it, it works. I'm so uh, mad because now I have to repeat everything from before. So I, I, I don't know um, how I'm going to start. So I'm just going to keep it much shorter because I, I just want to get this done, which sucks. But you know, that's just how it goes. So anyway, I was supposed to do a video last Thursday, last Friday, because, you know, whatever, right? Markets are going up and down like crazy. Uh, but I actually wound up exercising too hard. So therefore, you know, I had heart palpitations. And I wound up having to go to the hospital for like three days. So uh, that's how it goes. There's actually nothing wrong with me. It's just that uh, my exercises uh, were actually just improving my muscles. They weren't actually improving cardio like I thought it was. So I only know that now because my emergency room roommate, I guess you could call it that, he used to be a paramedic, and then he actually told me what the problem was. So long story short, he told me to do jump rope. I've been doing it now for today's... Well, yesterday was day two, I think. Today will be day three. And I'm loving it, you know, and I can definitely feel the difference. I can definitely feel the difference. And my roommate actually told me, my hospital roommate, he actually told me, oh, you know, uh, you know, I think it's his dad or someone he knows that's older... Uh, he's like 70 years old. He does not look 70 at all. He looks much younger. And all he does is just jump rope all day. So, yeah, it counts as a full body uh, workout, too. So I don't have to do that crazy strenuous work, uh, you know, exercise anymore. So that's that. That's why I didn't do anything. Um, and I did a video this morning, but it turns out that the audio was gone. So now I'm re-recording this video. I'm, I'm so annoyed. Uh, but with that being said... Um, whatchamacallit. Yeah, so, I don't know. And then, uh, just a little bit under stress because money's still drying up, right? So I might have to move in with my mom and dad. I'm still gonna be okay for, like, a few months, but, you know, I just want this thing to get over with, whether down or up. I don't really care, right? Because the way things are right now, it's just, like, slow burning. And it sucks because, you know, DeFi projects across the board are draining, cryptocurrencies are draining, stock markets are obviously draining. Um, now with that being said, you know, crypto is still holding okay, but, I don't know, Crypto Capo says, oh, I probably only hit the like button. Crypto Capo says that, let me see here, that, you know, support's failing, and, you know, dollars are uh, increasing, S&P 500's tanking, guess what Bitcoin will do? So for some reason, it's not actually going down. Um, I mean, it should be down a lot more. But, I mean, you could kind of tell that it's on its way down. But, I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. Okay, so now that it's actually 12 o'clock noon instead of, like, 8.30 a.m. So pretty much the stock market's proposed to open much lower, and they're continuing to crash even further. Now, this is interesting. The NASDAQ is not down all that much. I find that kind of interesting. Okay, so DXY. Yeah, so the dollar is up way too much. And right now people are pricing in a recession. Now it's just a matter of when they're pricing it in. But, you know, the Atlanta Fed now, Atlanta Fed now GDP. Uh, let's open this window. We'll keep track of this clown. Right, right now it's still negative 2.1 percent uh, as of July 1st. Right, and then the next reading will be July 7th. So that's in two days. So I think the markets right now are pricing in that we're in a recession now. I've been saying we're in a recession, and of course, you know, bonds are just going crazy right now. Uh, in fact, you can even see the headlines up here. So I actually closed out my SPXS, uh, you know, positions. 
even though I kind of don't really want to, I still will, I still have one share of SPDN, which is 1x short. Uh, and then I just simply bought JP Morgan Preferred Share C class. So let me see, JPM PC Finance Yahoo. And I'll probably uh, link to this. Oh, wow, I actually went up four cents from when I bought it. Nice. So, uh, so this pays a 6% a year dividend on $25. So the inherent value of this bond is $25 a share. So that comes out to $1.50 per year. And it pays out four uh, dividends four times a year. Because I was listening to Chuck Barone's last video from, I think, last Friday when I got back from the hospital over the weekend. And he actually said, if you want to be defensive, he mentioned preferred stocks. And I remember, I really did like preferred stocks. So as long as I don't think JP Morgan's going to pull a fast one or default on their debt, which is basically never, even if interest rates by the Federal Reserve go up, right, by a lot, right, because they have to deal with inflation, uh, then therefore the value of JP Morgan shares goes down. Now, why would I not mind that much? Well, I'm going to buy for cheaper. I still get the $1.50 a year dividend paid four times a year, right? Because that's the uh, that's the prospectus, right? That's those are the rules. That's the contract essentially, right? It's all public. And on March 1st, 2024, I'll leave a link to this. JP Morgan PC preferred stock share. Let me show you the other link as well. Preferred stock channel. Uh, this is not the page. I mean, this one might work. Uh, okay, let's. Where is. Oh man, I gotta try to find that stock. JP Morgan uh, preferred. Bird stock list. Let me see if I can get that URL again. Quant I think it's Quantum Online. Yeah. So there's a lot of sites that list preferred stock. You know, I like Quantum Online. I used to like using this a lot uh, back in the 2008 crisis. It's been a long time since I've used it. So this is the one I have, JPMC. All right. And if it has an asterisk, that means JP Morgan closed out the position and paid everyone $25 a share. Oh, okay, so it's March 21st. So basically on March 21st, 2024, JP Morgan at any time can redeem every share or any shares, I guess, of their preferred stock at $25 a share because those are the rules. So if you buy at like $10 a share and then you're willing to wait until basically March of 2024, which I'd be willing to do, then you are guaranteed a $25, you know, sell price later. So... So that's why these are considered defensive stocks. So right now I just want to preserve capital, gain, get a little bit of yield. I'm not going to buy the Jeppy that um, Greg Manorino recommended because the problem is it goes down. It's 100% correlated with the stock markets. This S&P is down 1.55. Jeppy, right, is down 1.77. Like this is this is this is. This is, I don't want that. Now the pro, now it's the the yield is very nice, right? But to be honest, I probably would just buy this at the bottom, or I'll buy more preferred stock, right? Because uh, again, I know the Federal Reserve has to raise interest rates, so whatever. All right. So this was not actually covered in this morning's video because I did it because I bought the preferred stock after I did the morning video, which of course has no effing audio. Okay, so I mentioned that I was watching the TV show Babylon Berlin, and I finally caught up to the final season that was released, which is season three, and I covered the stock market crash of 1929 and the lead up to it. So there was a character between the Russian ambassador in Germany. Uh, the, the, the German ambassador to the Soviet Union talking with like a left-wing daughter of a right-wing nationalist German military uh, commander, right? The Nazis still aren't actually that prevalent yet because, again, at that point in time, they weren't a big deal. But they do become a big deal later. So they were actually – so the, so the uh, German ambassador was asking the liberal girl, so – so do you, so you actually believe that the financial system is going to collapse and like things are going to get bad, but how do you know? Where will we see this? And she actually said, well, of course, we'll see it first in the stock markets. So that got me thinking, 
then I'm going to apply that same thinking and go, okay, well, I know that commodities are crashing, right? Because PDBC is going down. Crude oil is going down, right? So a lot of commodities are tanking. Gold is down. Silver is down a lot. So I'm thinking, where are we going to see the effects of inflation or deflation, right? Prices coming down. Because that's really what this all is about, is inflation. So the sooner we get rid of inflation, even if temporary, the sooner we can go back up, right? So right now we're going right now we're in a recession, and that's a good thing because now we can just get this over with, right? The faster we get this over with, the faster we can all, you know, can go back to making all the you know obscene amounts of money. And of course that means cryptocurrencies can just get it over with, right, and go back up. And I won't have to move in with my mom and dad again and then be driven up the wall. So uh, in the last, in this morning's video, I actually went through all of the uh, important ones. Now this time I'm not going to do that, but uh, what I'm going to do is uh, in copper, right? You'll see this is for important for housing starts. This has actually been on the decline, if uh, five years. So it's actually been in the decline, and the crazy inflation numbers we've been seeing. Basically, if you look at a lot of these commodities, they've all been spiking in April and May, which is not surprisingly when our inflation CPI was also going berserk. So now we can see that everything's basically going down. And after today, I assume it's, yeah, I mean, these things are all in the red. So basically, commodity prices are just crashing. So this is actually pretty good. So we might actually uh, be able to get out and just get this over with, you know, nice, fast, quick recession, all right? So it's kind of like the needles that I had to get jammed in with when I was at the hospital. It's quick and painful, right? Can't deal with the pain, but at least I'd be willing to tolerate quick because it'll be over fast. So I'm still looking here, and interestingly enough, the, the open market is still pricing in a, a, a Fed rate hike uh, in July 27th, or later this month, of 75 basis points. So that's over, you know... It fluctuates between 85 and 95 percent, you know. So, you know, uh, so at this point, I'm pretty sure the Fed and Jerome Powell, you know, they, they must know that, oh, we're in a recession. So, <laughs> but we still have to raise interest rates, yeah, because again, you know, a CPI of what did we have last month? The last one, 8.6 or 8.3. That is an insane amount. That is an insane amount, and I can already see from. You know, the money supply that's been kind of flattening out. I'm hoping that they'll finally come out with the May or June numbers pretty soon. But, but the problem is we just got out of a four-day or three-day weekend. So the Fed hasn't even updated a single effing thing on their charts. July 1st, 2022. Yeah. So, so I'm definitely keep this page open. So, yeah, negative 2.1%. Yeah. So, yeah, but it looks pretty, it looks pretty good. All right, so, so I'm no longer in SPXS. I have one share of SPDN. Obviously, I want to buy more uh, defensive stocks or more, you know, shorting stocks, but, again, money's kind of tight. So, that's a too bad, too. Yeah, this thing is up a, a decent amount. Ah. <sighs> Okay, so, all right, so I got rid of that, um, 13 minutes, 40 seconds. Yeah, but I'm still remaining pretty bearish on the markets. Now, the thing is, Crypto Capo thinks that the bottom is going to be in for Bitcoin at like 16,000 or so. Richard Hart thinks the bottom for Bitcoin is going to be at 11,000. So, if they're, basically, if they're thinking that there's a bottom, that means the stock markets also have to have a bottom. Now, because Crypto Capo actually said this, the dollar index and the SPY, he obviously understands, you know, the macroeconomic factors. So he's more like us rather than, I guess, Richard Hart in that respect. So I'm actually thinking that the bottom might actually be coming in pretty soon, which would be a relief, right? And to be honest, all things considered, it really just doesn't feel that bad. I mean, you know, yeah, losing money uh, in DeFi and not making nearly as much as I'd like. Yeah, that really sucks. But all things considered, um, you know, I don't see I don't see bread lines forming outside. I mean, there's still food at the any mar supermarket or grocery store you go to. Like, you, my credit cards still work. 
I mean, life is still more or less pretty normal, you know? You know, so... Yeah, so anyway, I think inflation for now will be tamed. Um, and again, where is the picture? And again, because of all the central bank debt market manipulation, the U.S. debt market has been going on, I'm not really sure when we're going to see the inflation as all of this and the reverse repo stuff that we see over here. Actually, I should put this over here. Uh, but with that being said, Greg's video... Greg Manor's video from today did say that there's a big fear trade going on right now. Everyone's buying up bonds. The U.S. dollar is knee-jerk higher reaction by a ton. So this would actually be an, ex an excellent opportunity for the Federal Reserve to actually sell off and the European Central Bank to sell off a bunch of the debt that they bought up back into the actual open market. And then that actually delevers the system uh, a lot. So that's something Greg didn't mention. Right, because when the Feds and the central banks were buying it up like crazy, you know, the the current going rate for the U.S. 10-year at the time was like 350, 3.25, 3.10, 3. Right now, the U.S. 10-year yield is 2.787. So that means the all of the U.S. debt that they all bought at a higher yield is worth more. So the federal, so the central banks can actually make a lot of money and at the same time delever the system. It's a literal no-brainer because they really don't want this balance sheet to be going too high up, right? Because they know that if it goes too high up too fast, well, what happens, right? We get this problem again, you know, hyperinflation. So it's like it, it's a game of cat and mouse on the Titanic while spinning around in, uh, in circles at like you know 10,000 miles an hour. You gotta like be fast and like keep track of like 11 million things all at once. <laughs> it's just like you know, I don't understand how the hell anyone was able to come up with this stuff, but it clearly works, right? It's, it's, you just got to wrap your head around it after a while. <sighs> pretty pretty crazy, right? But the important thing is at least everything is predictable. That That's actually the modern miracle of central banking is that everything is predictable. Also, why can't I... Oh. Hold on a sec. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, all right, now I was just playing my idle game. All right, so the bottom's going to be in, and I'm, well, I'm definitely watching the cryptocurrency markets. They're really not going down all that much, which it should be, because the stock markets are tanking. So usually they're all very correlated. Now, technically, it is down about a similar amount to the S&P 500. So, I don't know. I, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. All right, if you like what you saw, read, or heard, in case I forgot anything else, I don't think so, uh, like, subscribe, share this video around. Thank you again to all the old and new people watching this video. And, my God, I really hope that the audio is working. All right, I'm going to, like, because I'm already kind of irritated from the possibility I have to move it back in with Mom and Dad, so I... I want to punch something and break something to vent my frustrations. But on the other hand, I mean, it's not, all is not lost, obviously, and I'll make a lot more money if I do move in with my parents, but the price I pay is my sanity. So I put a, and actually my time, believe it or not, I'll have less time because my parents are going to constantly interrupt me and then, like, screw up my videos. So, yeah. But, I don't know. I mean, Titan's doing okay, and from what I can tell, cryptocurrencies are actually resisting the going down pretty well, too. Uh, I, I, I mean, I would consider this pretty well. So, I don't know. I guess we'll just see. I guess we'll see. But I still remain short, but I think the bottom might actually be coming in. Especially if I'm right about my theory. About, let's try wheat, right? Especially if I'm right about my theory that, you know... If we want to see lower inflation, where will we where will we see it first? Just like in Babylon, Berlin, the 1929 stock market crash, we're gonna see it in the commodity prices here, All right? All right. Now, when it comes to meat, like which is pork, live cattle, and feed cattle, their prices are still pretty high uh, compared to like May. But in order to have these, you have to feed you have to feed them with the like wheat or corn or something to fatten them up. And these are all down quite a lot. All right. 
And on top of that, for some reason, like, there was, like, a couple of videos of, like, ten, like thousands or tens of thousands of cattle just just tipping over and dying for some for some mysterious reason. But I think we should see meat prices also come down in the markets as well. And then hopefully we'll see that reflected in the grocery store. Because my family member told me that uh, they went to Whole Foods here in New York City, right, owned by Amazon. And they actually said that, or no, maybe it was Trader Joe's, they actually lowered the price of, like, cheese by, like, 10 or 20 cents. So, all right. You know, it works for me. All right. So, anyway, I'm in J.P. Morgan uh, C now. All right, preferred stock. Uh, I would like to buy more shares of SPDN. I don't want to deal with the 3X bears anymore, even though it's a lot more profitable. It's also much riskier. And right now, I just don't want to deal with it anymore. I, have, I still have a slight headache from still recovering from the hospital in last week, so I'm going to try to take things easy. So I'll definitely see you all tomorrow. For now, we're going to keep doing uh, stock market videos. That's actually going to be my pivot for this channel. Uh, if I ever see crypto DeFi start improving again, you know, I'll do, you know, the good old, you know, hey, check out this, you know, possibly somewhat not so scammy project. Uh, but, you know, again, now that I've, we've been through all of this, I can now understand the only reason why you and I have money is because of the Fed, because of the central banks. And the, and the stock markets and stuff, right? Everything's a derivative of central banking. So as long as the central banks can keep printing money and wealth and we can get a share of that, we'll do well. When things are not like that, well, like, like it is now, well, then we got to get defensive. So, okay. Whatever it is, I just hope, again, that my theory is right. Inflation is going to be coming down. And in fact... The July 13th report for June 2022 might actually come in lower than expected because all these commodity prices were like crashing. Well, not soybeans. Those are still pretty expensive. Like all commodity prices were crashing in the middle of June, right? Here's June 9th, then here's June 17th, and then here's the end of June, which is basically June 27th. Like it just went straight down. Like this is a pretty large drop from 140 to... 93 93 48 right for cotton so all right well i mean we'll see what happens we'll see what happens all right i'll let you all go i'll let myself go uh, i still have a slight headache i'm gonna put an ice pack on my head uh sorry about this morning's video if you happen to watch it because there was no effing audio but uh, well that's what happens when you're just overwhelmed <laughs> That's how it goes. I'll see you all tomorrow morning, uh, and then uh, let's see what happens. Let's just get this over with, this recession. I mean, it's just like, ugh. Why get it over with?